Hello everyone. It is October 4th and as promised I was going to demonstrate this NIDEC. It's N-I-D-E-C. It, I know it's backwards. Everybody always emails me. It's backwards. I can't read it. Well, um, that's the way I shoot with my phone. Um, get that out of the way. <laughs> um, anyway, so I'm going to put some handles on and I bought this, um, NIDEC, like I said, it's N-I-D-E-C. Um, they bought out Shimpo. So when I first started shopping for these, I would see Shimpo and NIDEC and I couldn't figure out, you know, I was trying to compare the two and here they're really the same thing. Um, this, this is an excellent, I mean, it's, it's, it's got some flaws, but, um, when you squeeze out the handles, um, yeah, they have some marks in them as you, uh, with each, with each compression, it leaves a little mark, but, but overall, um, I love this thing. That's why I have to share it. <laughs> I'm not getting paid by them or anything. <laughs> um, but anyway, let me, um, you saw me make the mugs the other day. And, uh, so here's my. Here's my mugs. I kind of trimmed the bottom. They're nice and smooth. And I like straight, straight up mugs. Like I said, I don't, I don't like the fancy ones. Hopefully these are uh, wet enough, damp enough. I, I keep spraying them. I need to make myself a damp box. Um, and for those of you who don't know what a damp box is, um, it is a Tupperware, a large Tupperware container. I shouldn't say Tupperware, Rubbermaid. Rubbermaid. I'm I'm always, I was always a Tupperware girl. You can tell my age. Um, but it's a big Rubbermaid container with about oh, three inches of, two and a half inches, three inches of plaster in the bottom of one of those, those big, you know, Rubbermaid containers. And then you let that dry in the bottom and then you dampen it, put your mugs, whatever you have to add things to. Um, like if you're making lanterns or something and you're going to do carvings or, or anything, you store it in that Rubbermaid container and, um, I think I got mud on my clay, clay on my glasses and, um, it'll stay moist for months, you know? So anyway, and I've been recycling some clay here. Um, and I'll show you what that looks like too. I made kind of a mess here. So what the heck, why not share? So anyway, so I got six mugs here. I don't know if I'll put handles on all of them during the video. You guys might get bored, too bored, you know, with all that. But anyway, let me put you down here. Let me show you the mess I'm making. <laughs> um, okay, there we go. So hopefully you can see, it's like little piles of poo-poo. <laughs> but this is how I recycle my clay. Since I don't have, you know, a large studio, um, for those of you who don't have a, you know, an endless budget, have a big studio, I, I hate, um, saving up a bunch of clay and then you've got, you know, I always see these people with buckets and buckets of clay. And this is actually how I make my students recycle their clay also. Um, if you let it build up like a, you know, a couple gallons, people have five gallons at a time they do for... No thanks. No thanks. So this is a hardy backer board. Hardy backer board is the same as cement board. The same as what you make showers out of. And it is very smooth on one side and it's rough on the other side. So it's not, it's not um, drywall. The concrete really sucks the moisture out of the clay within. This clay here was sop and wet um and i mean i just laid it on here 10 minutes ago and it'll be i just have to wedge it good and it'll be ready to go so let me get rid of this but so i just you know i just i, I start a bucket and then when the bucket gets um you know a little full then i just keep recycling it Ugh. let me set that there hopefully that, hopefully that won't fall so, just make sure you 
Uh, it's got a little bit of moisture in it still. That's why it's sticking to this. This is birch wood. Um, I like to really do all my work on this wood because it wipes clean. Um, since I'm working out of my home, I don't want the dry clay dust in my house. We change the furnace filters every couple weeks in my house. Well, sometimes we go three, four weeks, but really no more than that. We constantly are changing out our furnace filters. You do not want to breathe in clay dust. It is toxic. It has very fine particles of silica, which is fine shards of glass that can get in your lungs. And once it's in your lungs, it never comes out. Same way with glaze. You never want to sand dry greenware or sand your dry glaze. Which I don't know why you would sand dry glaze, right? I'm getting a workout today. I was just out in the, oh, I just spent three days out in my gardens pulling all the weeds out and cutting stuff down, getting ready for winter here in Cincinnati, Ohio. I'm worn out. <laughs> so I want to get this nice and wedged up. Okay, I think that's pretty good. Just get the rest of this up. I try to keep, I try to wipe everything down when I'm done. I just don't, I just try to be really conscious about these dust particles. I'm like, I'm going to dump these in my water bucket over here. Okay, so I'm going to fill this gun up. And to do this, you just want to really... Kind of make a big giant log. I think that's a little chunk of white clay in there. I've actually switched over to white clay. I went. I just got back from my local clay supplier, Queen City Clay, and I got. I got. I, I picked up six boxes of B Mix Five with Grog. So I'm going to switch over to the whites. Do that for a while. It's so hard, you know, when you're in a small studio to go back and forth between white <clears throat> and dark clay. I envy the people who have two wheels, one for white, one for dark, or one for throwing and one for trimming, you know, however they, however they do it. But I don't have that luxury, so, okay, I want it flat on the end. Okay, so... We're going to unscrew this. I'm going to push this lever here. It's just like a silicone gun. When you push this lever, well, yeah, this just slides back. There we go. So you want this all the way back. Okay, and then you have an end on it like this. And then they give you about four discs. Two are blank, and then I think you have a choice of um, a couple different kinds. Like here's one they sent me. Um, and then this is, I'm not sure what you'd use that for. It's a little thick for hair. And then they gave me this one. And then a circle. This would be good for coil pots. Just you know, keep squirting these out. And then they gave me this one. So I had someone make me these two. I drew, I sent them this. I said, this is what I want cut out. And then they took, made these plastic discs and they just cut these out for me. And these are perfect for handles. So... makes it so much easier. So I'm just going to put this disc inside here. Screw the end on. It's really just like 
you know, like an ice when you're icing a cake. And then take this big log here. I'm going to cut the end off there. Okay. And you want this a little smaller than your cylinder. So it slides in there good. I know I, I made... You want to make sure it's a little bit smaller. Otherwise, you'll be fighting it, trying to get it in there. There we go. Okay. Cut off the top. I might have to cut off a little more than that. Well, maybe not. There we go. I'm going to press this down in here. Screw this on, and voila. So there you go. So that's what it looks like. So now, just like, let me squeeze this and get this all the way down in here. Okay, it's starting to come out. So this is what it looks like when it comes out. Now you can buy them like this too. Like I said, I had someone make mine. Let me cut this off so you can see the... Like a big giant cheese cut. I'm trying to think where I got that from. But there you go. So that's the thickness of your handle. So, okay. So... I've done this a few ways, and I have found the best way is to hold it like this. I'm going to lift this up and hope. Well, then my phone tried to pop out. You guys who know me know that my phone likes to pop out of the stand. Okay, so I'm going to just start squeezing it. Okay, so you can see it kind of curled, which I don't know why it does that. But I just kind of straighten it out like that. Okay, you can see how it doesn't come out real thick, comes out really just perfect. But I tried doing it. Okay, so in the easiest way too is you just, you know, don't work with big pieces. That's going to be one. And I'm only looking for six handles, so I really don't even need all this. But see, every time you squeeze the handle and stop, you do get like a little wave, a little marking in there, but I'll show you how to fix that. So I'll go ahead and do another one, just, just in case I screw up one of the handles. But look at that. All right. I'm just going to lay that down. All right. Lay my gun aside. And you don't want to let the clay dry inside there. That makes it really, that makes it very difficult to get out. So you want to soak it in water or, um, you know, get, get a bottle brush. Just clean it. So, okay. Um, so since they don't come out quite, I've got two, these are just paint sticks you can buy at the paint store for 99 cents a piece. And just kind of squeeze it. See that? Straight. I'm going to move this one over here. Move this one over here. There we go. Make sure they are straight. Alrighty, now I had a template of what I wanted. Now this clay is a little different actually than this clay. This is the the black porcelain and this is the Kentucky 
Mudworks Brown Bear. Um, I didn't have any of this left over except for what I have in a brand new bag and I don't want to open it for the handles. I'm going to take it to where I teach at and let them play with it there. Um, but anyway, so it won't matter because I'm going to dip these in a blue. I, I, I'm going to try that Tortuga blue from Kentucky Mudworks and just dip them in that. And so, oh, I did. Yikes. So when I was, when I was, um, trying to dampen these back up, I kind of messed up the, messed up the rims a little bit. So I might have to, I'll show you a trick to fixing the rims. I'm sure you've seen this before. You get a little planter like that. This is, I don't know what this costs me, but not much. Not much. And then you just slide that down in there. Yeah. Now this one is a little bit bigger than what um, I would actually need. Well, this is this is too small really for that. So I'm going to find a bigger one. Hmm. You know what'll work? Ha. I bet that'll work. No, that won't work either. Well, poop. I'll, I'll find something. Anyway. I'll fix those. But that's a kind of a soft, soft spot. So, okay. So, um, let's, um, let's just take a guess here. And let's see how much I clay I need. I think what I want to do is put, I think I'm going to do just do a simple one like that. Simple oval or a backward C. Okay, so, so I've got my length. So I'm going to cut these all out. I kind of got this thing wiggly. There you go. Get that straightened back up. I'm going to measure the other ones. Ah, well that figures, doesn't it? A little short, so I probably will have to extrude another uh, strip. Now, wouldn't you just figure it's like an inch short to get three out of there. I thought I had enough to get three out of there. That's a bummer. That's a bummer. Now I will put these in the, in the bisque kiln. Um, today it is, let's see, today is Tuesday. So I'll put these in the bisque kiln, hopefully on Thursday. Um, Friday at the latest. Look at that. Too short. I got my so Oh, I got six though. I did get six out of there. Yeah. Um, and then I'll start glazing next week. So I will share some glazing videos with you guys. Um, and then I will share my, my kiln opening. So you'll get to see... How these turn out when I do a kiln opening I don't I don't know I, it, it's too hard well I don't know it's not that really that hard it's just planning of um, making the video to show you all the different processes and the finished process at the same time but okay so I'm gonna take 
This is just a speedball container. I'm just going to lay these over here. To dry. I just want to set up a little bit. It makes it so much easier if they're not so soft that you're fighting with um, with them being, you know, really soft. I want to make sure they're lined up on here too. But what I was going to say is I didn't get to share my last kiln opening. It just kind of, everything turned kind of hectic with, uh, as some of you know, I we had to put one of our dogs down and then we had to put another one down and I don't know, it just kind of threw a damper, I guess, on my mood. <laughs> We're very, very close to our animals. They're like our children, our grandchildren, I should say, probably. Um, so anyway, so now we got the kittens, which I'm sure will be in some of my videos. But the two little, the two little girls, Molly and Millie, and um, we call them the girls. And the girls are sleeping right now. <laughs> it's nap time. <laughs> they are, they are wild, but they have been so much fun and. So, really, so good for the heart. Animals are so therapeutic. I... Okay. So, normally I would let these set up for probably half an hour. But since I'm doing this video, you can see I just got them all lined up. But, yeah, you normally I let them set up like a half an hour. Let them really firm up. But I don't, I could do it, I guess, if I turned off. If I turned off the um, camera and started it back up again, but but I don't. That's not really necessary. So I'm going to wrap some paper around them because the paper will absorb. The paper will absorb. Oh, the dead, a dead daddy long leg. Oh. <laughs> just, just went in my cup. Just went in one of my cups. There we go. The paper will absorb some of the moisture. There we go. Okay, I'm going to set these over here for a second. Okay. And I've got some slip made up. So this is, um, I think this is um, the Kentucky Brown Bear. And I just mix water with it. You Normally, I couldn't find my my vinegar. Normally you take dry, let your clay dry first. I mean you can do it with wet clay but it's easier if it's dry and then mix some vinegar with it and I just use a, an old mixer and mix it up. But yeah so this is some slip and then I don't always use slip. Sometimes I just use vin plain vinegar. Plain vinegar works. And I have my serrated rib. So I can score. Get rid of all that dust. Okay, now let's get the mugs over here. I'm going to smooth the rims because I messed them up a little bit. That one there is pretty good. This one I must have uh, hit it with the spray bottle too much. There we go. Just smooth it a little bit. It should be okay. I think I can... I think I can, um, 
I'll put the handle on the dry side, on the drier side. And then when this sets up, I can trim it a little bit. I really need it. I really do need a damp box. Because I, I, I always forget. I shouldn't say I forget, but you know, you get busy. And the next thing you know, the mugs are dry. And I had them covered up with like two or three layers of plastic. And they still dried out. I'm hoping my bowls and everything. I made a bunch of leaves. Um, I've got these placemats that are oak, big giant oak leaves. So I made some of those for the show I'm in next weekend. And um, so I got those drying all over. So I hope those dry because I have to get everything into the kiln in a couple days. And that's that's kind of I'm gonna clean this all up. That's kind of rushing it. I know, kind of killing time here. I hate, I hate my table's all dirty. Is anybody else like that? Got one more here. I gotta clean this rim up. So this is birch wood, like I said, that I'm working on, and it's just a sheet of birch wood. Um, you can get it at your local hardware store. And then I apply linseed oil to it. And I have not put linseed oil on here in a couple years, but it needs it. I mean, it's, it's nice to do it like once a year. And it does stink, so you want to do it outside or with an open window. Then I just get an old paintbrush that I use to apply the slip. Boy, I messed up this rim too a little bit. Ugh. I should have had these standing up when I sprayed them with water to try to. Oh well. Oh well, they should be fine. Okay. So I'm just going to lay down this towel. I'm going to score where I want this to go. I'm going to look for, uh, sometimes, you know, if you have an imperfection or something, it's nice to just hide it. And I'm going to put it just below the rim because I may put a little um, ball on the top, like a thumb rest. And another thing that I prefer is I don't like when the handle goes above the rim. I see some people doing that and um, so let me grab one of these handles and I'll show you. Well, I can hold. So I don't like when the handles go like above the rim because when you're trying to dry them, it's nice to be able to turn them upside down and let the handle top of the handle sit on the surface um, it holds it in place easier than if you turn it this way then you can have you know the handle tries to pull off of this uh, scoring where you've got a scored because depend depending on how you put your handle on of course but a lot of handles go up like that so you're creating tension if you set your handle down and let them dry that way it's much better to let them dry that way so, and it makes it really difficult if you've got this big loopy handle that goes above the rim. So I, me personally, I don't, um, I don't like when they go above the rim. Okay, so I'm going to set that aside. Let me get my handles over here. <laughs> I 
now they're sticking in here. See, normally once they dry, they won't stick because because they, when they dry, they'll release. But um, so, but yeah, normally I let them set up a little bit more. So I'm gonna score. You can see this. I'm going to score the bottom of my handles. You know, also, if you have a heat gun, you can take a heat gun to these or a blow dryer. So I'm just going to set this on here, like so, with my hand on the inside. Of course, but this, these mugs are pretty firm, so you won't have to worry about smashing the side in or really um, setting it off round. And I like to put somewhat big handles on mine. Um, I once had a man come up to me in a show and he said, he said, thank you for putting some bigger handles on these mugs. He said, everybody puts these small handles on there. And he said, I can't get my hand in there. <laughs> so there we go so now I'm going to add a little bit I've got my slip here let me put this out of the way here I'll show you the other ones I did um, now the other ones I dipped in white slip uh, these I'm not going to do that so I'm just going to paint some slip on here get it in all the cracks and crevices and voila there you have a handle so much more pain free than if you were rolling them yourself And like I said, I think what I'm going to do is um, take some of this clay. Let me grab one of these other mugs and show you what I did with the other ones. So here's the other ones I did. But see, now I have a different handle in there. And I just laid them over. Um, I actually used I actually used the Nidec gun and just laid my handles over that until they firmed up a little bit. Then I laid them on their sides. And that's and that really helped because it makes sure they're straight up and down. And then when they were dry, I dipped them in white slip so so I will paint on those I have a little bit of cleanup to do you can see I got a little bit of I don't know if you can see that a little bit of slip on the inside that I got to clean up but other than that those turn out really nice I like how those look I almost like them just the way they are but I'll paint something on there so okay well so you want to look at this and make sure that it's straight before it starts firming up. Look at it that way. Look at it that way. It looks like it kind of it bows just a little bit here. So these kind of match my. I just made some Cincinnati mugs. I mean, some Cincinnati chili bowls kind of matches that. Let me show you one of those. Well, this is setting up. I got those dry in here too. Let's see here. I got everything covered in plastic so you dry nice and slow. So here's my Cincinnati chili bowls I made. 
So you see the handles kind of match. So see on these I put just like a little square with a little design in the top. And then these are hand built. There we go. You can see the seam here. And then, um, so then the stamp, I think stamps for us. Um, so the stamp is one that I hand drew. I hand drew this on paper and I sent it to the stamp company and they made a stamp out of it for me. So this is the skyline of Cincinnati. I, I looked at like three different photos of it and I kind of, um, just added together what I wanted, like the buildings I wanted to keep and like this one I had to add in. And then I wanted to add the bridge in. I love this bridge, the old suspension bridge. But anyway, so um, these handles on the mugs will kind of match the handles on the chili bowls. I made, I made about, let's see, one, I made 12 of those. So I may add something to this. And I'll clean these up a little more later. I just want to get them all on. There we go. Okay, so let me do another one. Just, I just lay them down here. Kind of scratch where I want the handle to be. Make sure it's up and down from each other. It's, it's in line. There we go. Add some slip. Can't get another one off of here. There we go. All right, I'm gonna score these edges. And by laying it on its side like this, you can make sure that the handle is straight. I know a lot of people um, pull their handles. And I do pull some handles. Um, it's not my favorite thing to do. And I didn't slip the other one. You really don't have to slip the handle itself, but it is nice to get it in there. Get it in all the grooves. I'm going to set this on here. Line it up. Make sure it's straight up and down both ways. There we go. And now I'm going to press down. There we go. Find a dry spot on the handle. Make sure it's still straight. Actually, I, I, I kind of like them like that more. What do you think? I don't know. Hmm. Now that I'm looking at it, I don't know. Now I can't decide. No, I don't think so. I think I'm going to make them leave them oval. There we go. I think I'm going to leave it leave it like that. Put a little more slip on there. Hope everybody is um, enjoying their day. 
my thoughts and prayers go out to all the hurricane victims. Um, Sanibel Island and Fort Myers is very dear, very dear to my heart. We have been going there with my family since I was probably 10 or 12. And we actually have reservations to go to Sanibel in January. I don't know if we'll still be able to go or not. Um, but gosh, that, that is just, I've been watching all the videos and updates and that is just unbelievable what Mother Nature has the power to do. So I hope they all get the help they need. So, do one last check. You know, it wants to, it wants to be somewhat flat. So I think I'm actually gonna turn it upside down. I don't know. Maybe I'll let it sit like that for a little bit. I don't know, it's growing on me. <laughs> I can't. <laughs> oh, goodness. I'm terrible trying to decide. I think I'm, I think I'm going to flatten it just a little bit. Just a little bit. I don't know. Oh, I'm out of the camera. I should raise it up just a little bit. I'm afraid it doesn't pop out of the stand. It usually does. So yeah, I think I'm going to leave it more like that. And then I was going to show you before before I let you go. Oh, got cobwebs everywhere around this house. We got those kittens. I had to go around on my hand. God, he's on a daddy long leg again. I had to go around to um, on my hands and knees and look for all the things that they could get into and oh my gosh you know and I realized what a what a bad housekeeper I am <laughs> so let's see so I think what I'm going to do I'm going to pick out a stamp over here um, these are the coolest I know people can answer where I got these. I, I, I know they're off of Amazon. This is a little fishy. Let's see. That's a snowflake. Uh -uh. That's an elephant. I just want something generic. And that's another fish. Let's see. Well, this is a nice one. Oh, there we go. I like this one. I've used this one before. Oh, I wonder if that'll... Hmm. I think that one will work. So, I'll just score the back of this. And some slip. Or this little bit here. And then while I hold the handle up and support that, I'm going to press down. There we go. Kind of clean it up with a little bit of water here. Now it pushed this down a little bit, so I'm going to push that back up. And it does see, now that sticks above, which I hate, and I just did it. Um, so I'll what I'll do is I'll dry these like this. But anyway, so there's my 
There's my handle. But it's so much easier with this gun, isn't it? At least it feels like it to me. Alrighty, I'll set that aside. Make sure it make sure it's cleaned up. And it's on there good. So I will um I'll let these set up a little bit. Make sure everything is still cohesive. That's that's the part. If you let these set up a little more, you don't have to keep fooling with these stupid things. They they won't keep, you know, getting out of shape. But since I was kind of rushing it for the video, I got to keep going back and trying to fix that. But anyway, so so yeah, this is the this is the small one. I don't know what size you'd call it, but it's not the big one. You don't need the you don't need the big one. You can just keep refilling this, and unless you're making like 50 mugs, then you might want it. But uh, for most people, this size is fine. And I mean, this is still half full. You can tell the the plunger is only half in there, so I could still make uh, enough handles for another dozen mugs probably. So, um, anyway, I love this thing. Um, I am so glad I finally broke down and bought one. They're so much easier to add handles on the mugs. And, um, and it's so important, really, to let them firm up before you put them on. Like I said, I was hurrying these. But, um, and what you can do, too, is, yeah, these are sticking. Ah, it's not good. Sometimes I just take them, I set them on my table like that. I like to get the shape kind of dried in there first. I don't know, and you just don't fight with them as much. And I could, I could put um, what I can do here is just put a little cornstarch on the bottom. There you go, you boogers. Now they're not going to stick. Yeah. There you go. I love this cornstarch. That's the white you saw. I meant to say that. That's the white you saw when I showed you the Cincinnati chili bowls. Um, the white on there is cornstarch. I dust those with cornstarch first before I put the stamp on so that the stamp does not stick. And you actually get a much deeper impression in your clay if your clay is somewhat dry or um, there we go. Um, or you use cornstarch because if your if your stamp sticks as you pull it out, it's it, the clay is sticking to it, and you're pulling the clay back out. So anyway, um, my back. <laughs> Let's see if I can get this to come up a little higher. Now it's crooked. There we go. There we go. You can see it's pretty outside today it is oh it's so nice we've got here in Cincinnati we've got a couple more warm days today I think it's supposed to be like 70 and sunny and then tomorrow's gonna be like 74 and Thursday 76 and then you can tell I'm a weather a weather geek and then Friday's like a high of 50 and low in the 30 so <laughs> we're um we have such weird weather in Cincinnati it seems like we even had rain in like two or three weeks so the ground is all dry so we get the sprinklers running um trying to i just planted some rose bushes today to knock out rose bushes i got for 50 percent off so i got those planted and um i don't know just trying to get everything cleaned up and so this will be i might make some pumpkin um some pumpkin lanterns before i don't know if you guys saw this you guys see this on pinterest I'm trying to think who this is. Countrydoor.com. I think this is a, a big company. But aren't those adorable? I think about making some pumpkins. My worry is that they won't dry in time. But we'll see. So I don't know. That was an idea. So I'm going to a pumpkin festival. You know, I feel like I should um, have more pumpkin stuff. And I used to make a ton of pumpkin plates. and But then... You know, you just get kind of burnt out with um, 
making those things. One, two, three, four, five. Five. One, two, three, four, five. Yeah, okay, so I got five more little balls to make. <laughs> Alrighty. Well, you guys have a great day. Thanks for watching. And if you have any questions, always feel free to ask. Um, somebody had, um, maybe this person will see this. Um, they asked me if I had some pieces in stock. Um, gosh, I can't remember what the pieces were now. But I do have them in stock. And I tried to find the post where they asked me um, about if I still have a couple of these pieces left. I think it might have been a, was it a red bird. No. Gosh, I don't know. Anyway, but I could not find your post. So I'm not ignoring you. If, um, if you happen to see this video and you make it this far, um, please send me another, another message. Um, and I can tell you what I have left in my trailer for you to buy if you want to still. Uh, but yeah, I, I could not find your message anymore. So anyway, all right. Thanks so much for watching and have a great day. And I will uh, fist fire these and I'll show you some glazing next week. All right. Thanks so much.